and metals combined with nonmetals. Metals are the two thirds of the periodic table to the left here, and they combine with nonmetals except the noble gases, which they don't combine with. Uh, you will get ionic compounds. Okay. Uh, as a uh, general rule, the atomic size of metals is larger than comparable nonmetals, meaning same period. Uh, the effective nuclear charge that we talked about for metals is lower than the nonmetals in the same period. And finally, the ionization energy, in at least some cases, is lower for the elements on the left side than it is on the elements on the right side. And you remember uh, the uh, notes that we made about uh, boron is actually less than beryllium and why it was and um, nitrogen's actu oxygen is actually less than nitrogen and why. Uh, but in, in the absence of those things, uh, we see these comparisons. So as we look at ionic compounds, which is where we're going to start in this, uh, we will uh, expect to see them in all cases where a metal is reacted with a non -metal. Uh, before we get to that, uh, I want to talk about Lewis dot symbols. That's going to be a um, uh, very uh, uh, commonly or uh, frequently invoked uh, reason for things. Its Lewis dot structure is thus and such, and that's why something is true. So we want to be sure that you can get the right Lewis dot structure because I find frequently that uh, some high school chemistry teachers um, take it upon themselves to change the Lewis dot structures that the rest of the world uh, observes. Uh, I hope yours didn't. Uh, but anyhow, let's, let's start off with uh, what a Lewis dot symbol is. First of all, you have uh, a, uh, uh, a one or two letter symbol that represents both the nucleus of that particular atom and all its core electrons. Okay? Everything but the valence electron is, is represented by either Li or Be or Na, the two letter or one letter symbols. Okay? Uh, around that one letter or two letter symbol will be some dots. And these dots represent valence electrons but they do so in a particular way which reflects, one, the electron configuration, and two, how that element forms bonds. So the electron configuration by itself is not always sufficient to predict what the Lewis dot structure is. So we need to keep in mind the Lewis dot structure has two things in it. G.N. Lewis, when he invented the Lewis dot structure, had this in mind. Uh, in fact, uh, I have seen on the web uh, his, his notebook, that he, his scientific notebook that he used when he was working this out. And although his handwriting is almost as bad as mine, uh, I could follow his thoughts and uh, why he chose to represent these things in the pattern that they are. So first of all, in group A elements, 1A, 2A, then 3A to 8A, uh, which is, of course, the main group, the group number gives the number of valence electrons. No big surprise there. Group 1A elements have one valence electron corresponding to an S1 configuration, group 2A, um, S2 configuration, so forth. The pattern that you need to learn if you don't know it already, is that as we start across a period, electron dots are placed singly around the symbol. For example, one for lithium and one for sodium. And then uh, uh, for beryllium, we have two that are separate, not paired up. Same for magnesium. And we get up to four and up to four, we would have uh, three dots by them, each by itself, or four dots each by itself, which we'll see in a minute. Only then do we start to make pairs of dots. It does not matter specifically where you place the dots, i.e., 
above the symbol, below the symbol, to the left, to the right, doesn't matter. Okay. Now here is the pattern for the main group atoms. And um, you can see from this, the pattern that I was talking about, uh, one single dot for group 1A, two single dots for 3A, uh, 2A I mean, three single dots for 3A, and four single dots for 4A. And then we start to pair. 5A has one pair and three singles, 6A has two pairs and two singles, and 7A has three pairs and one single, and then of course with 8A we have four pairs. That pattern is reflecting, uh, it reflects both the number of electrons that we have and the number of bonds or charges these particular elements uh, take on when they form compounds. So here is the bridge, the first bridge that we're going to cross to get from atoms to molecules, from elements to compounds. Okay, the total number of dots around metal atoms can usually be lost to form metal cations. We saw last week um, some uh, examples of exceptions to that, like tin. Uh, tin is a metal, uh, but it's too far from any noble gas to completely lose all its, uh, its electrons or to gain new electrons. So this, I'll say usually here. And the number of single dots around nonmetal atoms, you remember what that's like in the periodic table, where the nonmetals are compared to the metals, it usually represents the formation of ionic compounds, the number of electrons that that atom gains to form an anion. And this is usually one, two, or three. The instances where there's more than three are very rare, and we probably won't encounter any in this course. Okay, unpaired dots can be paired with those of other nonmetal atoms to make covalent bonds. The number of unpaired dots then would represent the number of bonds that a nonmetal might form. So if you think about carbon, for example, you may have been puzzled why it has four single dots when it's 2s2, 2p2. You might have thought, well, didn't my teacher tell me that that would have a pair of dots and two singles? It almost, carbon, that is, almost never forms anything other than four bonds. For our purposes, it would be, um, I could only think of one exception, uh, and that would be carbon monoxide. And we'll see that a little bit later. Uh, so uh, we can expect carbon to form four bonds, and as such, the four electrons are set up singly in order to allow for the formation, the direct formation of four bonds. Likewise, boron with S2P1 is set up to form three bonds. Oxygen with S2P4 is set up to form two bonds, as in water. It doesn't mean that's all it can do, but that is sort of the common thing that it, that it does. 